program. On the line with us is the actor, comedian, and radio host, my colleague right here on Sirius XM Progress Channel 127, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time, the host of the John Fugelsang podcast on Apple, uh, johnfugelsang.com and sexyliberal.com, uh, the one and only John Fugelsang. John, welcome to the welcome to the program. Uh, uh, Louise and I were uh, watching uh, reruns, old old CSI episodes, and uh, there you were uh, as a dead body. Ultimately, what's it like to be dead on television? Oh, let me tell you. I mean, I'm 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 a rather pale person, uh, Mr. Hartman. So it's kind of embarrassing. I became the first Hello? actor in history. They had to darken to play a corpse, uh, which was a bit embarrassing. But I I want to point out I I played a, a con man who was also a coke mule. Uh, but I, I played it as a coke mule who happened to be a con man. That's my actor's choice. So, yeah, uh, that was really me being really dead on CSI. <laughs> they, and, and I had to be alive last. They filmed me in my autopsy first. Then they filmed me dead on the ground in a bucket of blood. And then finally they flew me to Vegas to be alive at the end. So it was a, a nice backwards experience. Have I lost you, Mr. Hartman? Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I guess that's how they, they just, you know, patch these things together. Say yeah. that again? Oh, I thought I lost you for a second, Tom. Sorry. Say what, John? Uh, am I losing you, Tom? I think we might have a oh, bad no, connection. No, I'm, I'm here and you're still here. It's, uh, oh, I'm doing okay. my show remotely from home, so... Oh, so am I. Terrific. Well, it's it's great uh, no, to be what's, with you. What's going on is, we, is there's a little bit of latency. I'm, I'm doing the show from home because I have COVID. And, and, the, and the latency is what's catching us. So each of us has about a second delay, and that's making it confusing. Um, but uh, tell me about the Sexy Liberal Tour coming up. Thank you, Tom. I have many latencies as well, so it's great to be in a safe space to discuss. Uh, yeah, we're back on the road with the Sexy Liberal Tour. This year it's the Save the World edition. <laughs> And um, we've been playing uh, since January, and it's been amazing. We've had packed houses, incredible enthusiasm, Mr. Hartman. Everywhere we've gone, you know, we, we, we built this tour about uh, a decade ago to try to be like the blue-collar comedy tour for smart, moral people. And uh, there's so much enthusiasm. People are in a... 2,000 seat space with other progressives or liberals or Democrats or moderates or just uh, anti-evil people. And uh, the energy's been great. We've had great guests joining us on stage from Pramia Jayapal to Mark Pocan. I even heard a rumor that Tom Hartman might be joining us on one of our gigs on this tour. Yeah, I'm going to show up for the Portland event. I, you know, this sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I have uh, participated in them in the past, as you know. Uh, so, uh, but you know, in a, in a very, uh, I'm not a comedian, so I just got to show up. But uh, so, I'm, I'm curious, John. You know, it's been 50 years, or nearly 50 years, since uh, Richard Nixon resigned to avoid being charged with a crime, and now we've got a Republican Party that is on the verge of putting a convicted criminal uh in 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 you know the running for the for the presidency um we've got a supreme court justice who has been taking bribes literally millions of dollars in bribes and was the deciding vote in citizens united which benef you know his it principally benefited his benefactor uh, mm -hmm. allowing you know uh, harlan crow and other right-wing billionaires to start buying politicians and legislation and stuff like that uh, sam alito refusing to accuse himself after you know taking a position on january 6th with his flag flying what the hell right. is going on in this country in your opinion uh, i mean where do you want to begin mr hartman it's great the republican party is finally after all these years come out for criminal justice reform uh because they now think convicted felons should get classified briefings so that's that's progress um you know this is what it's like in the united reich of trumpistan Sam Alito uh, flying his flags, I mean, and we make it all about what, what his wife. We make it all about his wife was flying the flag, disregarding the fact that this man needs to recuse himself on cases involving the terrorist attack to overthrow our democracy. I, I'm waiting for him to fly an up down, upside down Confederate flag at this point. But, uh, you know, it, you brought up accountability. And between Alito and Menendez, it seems like a really good summer for guys of both parties to blame their sins on their wife. But this Supreme Court is beyond comprehension, Tom. I mean, Lady Justice wears a blindfold so she doesn't have to watch Clarence Thomas wag his junk at her. 
what makes me so upset is that the, these six justices, all six of them, well, five of them were appointed by presidents who achieved the White House after losing the popular vote. Uh, and the sixth, Clarence Thomas, was appointed by a president who opposed the Civil Rights Act of 1964. So we don't choose the people who choose our laws. And more and more, young people are getting an education about real power in America, which is, with great power, comes no accountability. I, I find it harder and harder to say that we're not living in an oligarchy like this. I, I do believe that the accountability fairy is coming here and there. It's great to see a guilty conviction for Trump here and there, but we have a system where there's zero oversight for the Supreme Court. There's no way we can do anything about it. Um, I'm on the side of a special prosecutor. I'm on the side of a rather an independent counsel. And the Republicans can't utter any criticism against it. They've become an amoral cult of blind, unmanly, obedient eunuchs. If Nixon had had Fox News, Mr. Hartman, I think he could have probably stayed in office. Yeah. John, you and I have known each other for uh, well over a decade. You could stop calling me Mr. Hartman. <laughs> but that said, the other thing about the two of us is that we're probably two of the only uh, progressive talk show hosts out there that, you know, are openly uh, spiritual. I, I, I'm reluctant to say religious. Um, and uh, now we're seeing... Um, religion basically being shoved down the throats of people. We've got now five states that are doing universal voucher programs where the taxpayers of those states are being forced to subsidize church schools, in some cases very substandard church schools, in some cases explicit white-only church schools. That's right. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on, on uh, A, the state of religion in America in general, and, and what the MAGA and QAnon movements have done to it, and B, uh, uh, this encroachment of religion into government. This is, you know, Madison and Jefferson had this running debate throughout their lives. Madison was convinced that if government ever started giving money to churches, it would be the end of religion. Madison, of course, was a Christian. He was very concerned about his own religion. Um, and that's why the, his first veto in uh, 1809 was, or 1811 was uh, a bill that gave money to a church in D.C. to care for the poor. Um, he said this is, an, this is an agency, this should be a, a, a function of of government. Jefferson, on the other hand, was concerned that if priests, religious leaders ever became politicians, it would lead to the downfall of our country. Turns out they were both right. <laughs> You're so right, Tom. This is my favorite subject. I'm writing a book about this right now called Separation of Church and Hate, because I, I can't blame it on QAnon or the Tea Party. This has been around for a long time. I mean, these same founders who were good Christians but wanted separation of church and state, well, they owned people. So, you know, America's had a real problem from its founding of people claiming to be Christian and then actively going against the teachings of this Nazarene. Today, it's out of control. I mean, I ask everyone, please give me, I, I ask all the MAGA people to please give me one actual teaching of Jesus that Donald Trump has fought for in his entire life. And this is a fun game your listeners can play with all these right-wing Christians because none of them actually follow the Nazarene they pretend to follow. They just don't. You know this, Tom. They, I, so ask them, give me one Jesus teaching yeah. that guided your vote for Trump, one teaching of Christ that Trump has ever fought for. The first thing they'll say is abortion. But the Bible's not against abortion. Judaism's not against it. God makes it clear in Exodus 21 that a fetus is property, and God gives abortion tips for unfaithful pregnant wives in Numbers chapter 5. God drowns every fetus on earth one time because he was in a mood for it. Um, Jesus was against the death penalty, never against abortion. Abortions are legal and free in Israel now because Judaism doesn't ban them. So what else you got? The number two thing they'll say is uh, he has a strong border. And that's when you have to tell your Trump-supporting loved ones, no, the only commandment about immigration or borders in the entire Bible, Old Testament or New Testament, is the commandment to welcome the stranger. You're against Jesus on that. So the third thing they'll say is, uh, uh, he moved the American embassy to Jerusalem. And that, Tom, is when I have to explain to my MAGA friends that Jesus never mentions America or where our embassy should be in the year 30 A.D., they are not Christian, they haven't read the Bible, and the real failure is in the media and the Democratic Party for not calling out these flock-fleecing Pharisees because they use Christianity as camouflage. We need to be in the camouflage removal business. 
Yeah, it's, it's brilliantly said, John. Uh, it, it really and truly is. Um, I, I'm, I'm also astonished by the situation, you know, Reagan uh, dropping the top tax rate from 74% down to 25%. I mean, it's floated up from there a little bit, but Elon Musk just got a $44.9 billion paycheck. Um, you know, this should be subject to a 90% income tax. I mean, this is, I want to bring back for the income tax that Dwight Eisenhower liked. Uh, we have about a minute and a half before we hit a hard break here. Your thoughts? I agree with you completely. That would be the conservative point of view. Let's point out that Eisenhower was the last Republican to actually balance a budget and have a surplus, which technically makes him the last real qualified conservative. And by the way, Tom, it's 70 years this week that they put under God into our into our oath, uh, our, our mandatory loyalty oath. We make children say the Pledge of Allegiance. It's kind of creepy to make kids say a mandatory loyalty oath in a free society, but it was 70 years ago they inserted under God, only 70, which means not having God's name in our oath is technically the conservative point of view. But you're right, Eisenhower was the last one. I mean, I think I'm patriotic enough to realize that having billionaires has proven to be bad for our society. And yeah, I say let's do the conservative thing and go back to tax the super rich they'll still be richer than everyone else and elon musk can still tank tesla stock as much as he likes yeah there you go and uh you know we've i think we've got a real problem a, a real billionaire problem in america and right. three men own more wealth than the bottom half of america it's uh you know i think there's like a handful of families that own more wealth than than something like 70 or 80 percent of america it's just it's just mind-boggling and yeah. uh you know we need to fix this with our tax policy the great john fugel saying actor comedian and radio host uh, sexy liberal tour check it out sexyliberal.com John Fugel saying John.com. John, it's always a, a, a real treat talking with you. Thanks so much for dropping by. Tom, you're the best. Thank you very much. We're at the Paramount Theater in Denver this weekend, and I can't wait to see you all soon. Great. Looking forward to it. Thank you.